Hi guys, it's Amy from Now Polish Baby 90 and welcome to today's video. Today is super exciting because I've kind of came up with this idea about two weeks ago now. I put it on Instagram stories and so to see if you guys would be interested and a lot of people said yes, 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 yes. Working title that I'm going with, although by the time I edit this it could change, so who knows what's up there, is Amy Loves... And today we're going to do Harry Potter polishes. Um, so basically this is going to be a series. I'm not sure how regular I'll be able to do it. But I'm going to try my hardest to get this going. Which is going to be me showing you polishes from fandoms that I enjoy. Because a large portion of my collection indie wise is made up of polishes that I've bought. Because the polish is about something that I love. So today's series is going to start off with Harry Potter. Because I have a ton of polishes that are Harry Potter related. And that's part of the reason why I bought them. Some of them is the entire reason why I bought them and other than that it was just a nice side on bonus. So this is obviously going to be only featuring indies and they're all going to be linked down below for you. But let's have a look in my collection what polishes that I have that are Harry Potter themed. So this is divided up into four indie sellers in particular. So the first one will be no surprise when you think of fandom polishes you think of dollish polish she is like the queen of fandom polishes there are so many she does so many different types like if you are in love with any sort of fandom or theme she's done something for them um, and there actually was only four in my collection that are harry potter polishes so let's have a look at these ones the first one is from the ultimate fandom collection or fangirl collection and this one is called the deathly hallows i'm obviously going to be inserting swatch photos for all of these while we go so this one is a clear base with micro glitter running through the background of it and then it's kind of the symbols that make up the um Deathly Hallows. This video may get very geeky as I talk my way through Harry Potter, so just be aware. So obviously we have the circle, we have the bar glitters to make um, the lines, and then we have the triangle glitter as well. So it's all the little components that make up the Deathly Hallows, so I really love this one. It just looks so nice over just a black, something simple. I think I've worn it over grey as well. Um, so yeah, we'll start ourselves off with the Deathly Hallows by Dollish Polish. I then have two from the Epic Deaths collection. And I think maybe that these two are possibly the one, of, a couple of the worst characters that get killed off in the books. Definitely up there. The first one is Sirius Black, and let's just take a minute. When Sirius Black gets killed in Harry Potter, it is I, I'm devastated. I remember when I was reading the books, because I kind of read the books as they came out, so I kind of grew up with Harry Potter. It's British, so all of that together, I just really connect with it on a whole and more a little bit more I feel than just regularly reading the books I feel like it was age appropriate when the first one came out I was about nine or ten so I was coming up to like Hogwarts age so I feel like I've grown up with it and when Sirius Black got killed off I just think it was devastating Harry had him and then he lost him I think it was awful but this polish is beautiful on the flip side of this so it's a black credi base with a ton of um like shredded glitter very small shredded so it's mainly a light blue a silver and kind of like a, a gunmetal color it all almost to me kind of reminds you of the because he falls obviously through so it kind of reminds me of what like him the falling and especially how the way they show it in the film because I think there's kind of like some blue some blue stuff going on so the way that he falls back and goes through there I feel this kind of encapsulates it so um three coats of we've all got light and dark inside of us Another epic death was obviously Snape, and this one is one that I haven't worn yet, so I can't comment on coats at the moment, but this is called After All This Time, Always. Um, and this is a black base with green and silver micro glitter in here. Snape dying at the end and that all coming out was literally the best thing. Like, to know that J.K. Rowling had planned that the whole way through all the books, and at the end to have this reveal that after all this time, he was, like loved Harry in a way and he was doing it all for Lily, um, Harry's mum. I just thought it was just perfect. I love the way that there's so many little things that kind of bubble through the Harry Potter books um, and this is one of the things that was just wrapped up beautifully. Even though he had to die, it kind of all went be like really well together. So this one is um, After All This Time, Always, another one by Dollish Polish. Then we go on to a very classic dollish polish, which is Expecto Patronum, which is obviously the Patronus charm. This is a white curly base with um, teal metallic glitters in it. The glitters are a variety of sizes, maybe going up to a medium, micro, small, and medium glitters. Because this is a white curly base, it will take you three coats, or you could wear one over the top of a white. Um, but yeah, this is a classic dollish polish, and I feel that there's a brand that recently has done like all the spells. I think I've seen them going around. So 
at any point please just leave me comments down below with more Harry Potter polishes that you guys have found because I will happily spend all my money and buy them all. So expect to train them is the last dollish polish. We then move on to Sparkly Now Polish, um, and this is a newish UK brand. This is my first time trying this, and this is the Dumbledore's Got Style duo. As well as doing these, she's also done the house colours, um, and I think she's done the Mirror of Erised as well, but I didn't pick those up because I already have the house colours that I will show you in a minute. But they've also come out with this Dumbledore's Got Style and a Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Them duo that I will be picking up. I didn't feel like I had to rush because this wouldn't, it's kind of be in this video but not quite, but you know what I'm talking about. This one is Professor Dumbledore, so it's a indigo, purpley, mid-toned purple, um, and it's got a ton of holographic in here and also some flakies as well. This is opaque in just one coat. This is beautiful, it's slightly on the thicker side, but if it has to be a little bit thicker, it's still easy to work with, but I prefer thick and one coat than thin and not. This also featured in my Swatch Them All Weeks for new indie brands to my collection. So like I say, this is part one of this duo, and this one is Professor Dumbledore. Dumbledore's duo partner is Forks the Phoenix, and when I saw this being released, I thought this is really a good duo to do, because I think quite a lot of the time, the beasts are forgotten about. So like, Forks and that, and it would be great to do like, um... Hagrid with um, Fang or something like that. I think the, the juxtaposition of like man and beast is quite a nice one because the beasts, and same with that fantastic reason where they find them, the beasts and the characters like in Harry Potter are kind of not just pets or creatures, they're kind of elevated to a different level. Um, so this one is a really nice, um, like, a coppery colour which obviously speaks to me because I love copper and kind of reminds you of a bit of the colour of Forks and also the embers that he burns down into when he um, dies and gets reborn every time. There's also um, some gold in there as well so another one this one was completely opaque in two it was almost there in one but I think where it's slightly lighter I did have to do two. So uh, Forks the Phoenix by Sparkly Nail Polish. We'll go next onto a brand that I have quite a few from. I originally did a review on this full collection a year ago, I think it was the first Polish Me Royalties that I'd ever tried. Um, and these are, we have a division, we have the house colours. Like I say, a few brands have kind of done the house colours throughout the years, but these are the first ones that I picked up, and that's the reason why I don't really pick up the house colours, because I, I have them. And I don't feel like I need six Gryffindors, six Slytherins, six Ravenclaws, you know what I'm talking about. So the first one we have, obviously, is Ravenclaw, and this is my favourite out of the four house colours. It's a beautiful mid-toned blue with a little bit of a silver shimmer in there, um, completely opaque in two. This one is, um, did they call it Ravenclaw? I don't think she did. I think she was smart. Yes, yeah, she called it Knowledge. So they called, um, Sarah called it kind of like the things you think about with the house. So um, Knowledge is representing Ravenclaw. Cunning is representing Slytherin. And this is a beautiful darkish, yeah, we'll say it's a dark green. Um, and it also has some very fine silver glitter in there and, and a silver shimmer. Completely opaque in two. This one is called Cunning. I will also link to my review video down below of these uh, ones by Polish Me Royalty because this was a dedicated review I did on them, it's, although I'm probably repeating myself right now. So the next one we have is Courage and this is Gryffindor, a mid-tone red with a little bit of a gold um, shimmer and shift to it, completely opaque in two. Are you sensing the theme here? Two coats of Courage. Representing Hufflepuff is the, the my least favourite from the collection just because it was so bright and to me Hufflepuff isn't this bright yellow neon, it's more of a mustardy yellow. This also has um, black um, stars in here and some silver hexes. So this one takes three coats because it's this bright neon yellow and this one was called Loyalty representing Hufflepuff. The other two that came out with that collection are these two, and this one is called Always, um, and this is kind of, I think this is representing like the Patronuses as well as, I guess, a little bit of Snape. I think that Always was representing of the Patronus of when we see um, the doe and we think that it's Lily all the way back in the first film, so it turns out it's Snape. It's kind of like a Patronus and Snape polish in um, all together. So you can wear this as a topper or you can wear this by itself. It's a beautiful shifty shimmery pearlescent flaky mixture, um, completely opaque in in between two and three. Mine's thickened up a little bit over time so now when I wear this I can just do two but if you get a brand new bottle I would say it's a three coater. So that one is always 
We then have open at the close, which is representing the golden snitch, and it's kind of like a straight up gold metallic, nothing too fancy about it. Um, so that one again was open at the close. Since that original collection came out, I think, I'm, I'll have to go check the website actually, but I think this is the only other one that has been an add-on. This is called Felix Felicious, and this is um, a liquid luck. Um, and it is a gold liquid luck looking polish. This does dry textured because it's extremely glittery. It ranges from micro glitter all the way up to large. So it literally looks not like you've dipped your nails in like a liquid gold, um, in, like, a, like, a, like a pile of gold. Like in the films when they go into the vaults, it's like you've dipped your nails into one of those because it's just so um, like gold and encrusted and shiny and just yeah rich looking. Um, so you're going to take your two coats, it's going to be a textured polish to finish. But this one is called Felix Felicious. And onto the brand that to me kind of started it all. These are the ones that when I first started collecting nail polish years ago, um, I remember seeing this entire collection by Lack Attack and it, it just blew me away. It was mis mischief managed there was two music magic musings and mischief magic there was two lots of seven i think and i only have three of them i would love love all of them um and these ones are i have is harry ron and hermione so obviously harry is this red one here and this one is called the chosen one this is a red topper i don't think you could get it opaque by itself um it's a mixture of very 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 fine micro glitter and then large um red glitter i don't have too many red glittered polishes anyway so it makes this definitely very unique and it's in a circle and square glitters so that one is called the chosen one which is obviously harry on what other color would you represent with other than a ginger and this one is called weasley is our king um, and this is a lovely ginger gingery orange polish um, with a little bit of a silver shimmer in there too completely opaque in two this one is weasley is our king by lack attack I don't think Lack Attack is still going anymore, so I think really you're looking for D-stashes if you want to find any of these ones, teasing you, I know. Um, and the last one is called The Brightest Witch, which is my favourite, obviously it's Hermione. It's this beautiful kind of like sea foamy turquoise green, and then it's all matte glitters, so it's little matte squares, little dark turquoise squares, purple, and then black shard glitter. And yeah, I just really, I really love this, and I love, if you look, just Google the Lack Attack collections, they've got just so many of them. There's... Um, one that's Mad Eye Moody, there's one that's, is there one that's Tonks? There's, um, then the houses when they, uh, they come for the go for the Goblet of Fire, there's like Bo Battens and Durmstrang, and yeah, there's so many of them, you know, if you can get hold of them, you really should, because they're beautiful. So, three coats of The Brightest Witch by Lack Attack. I'm really hoping that's everything that I have in my collection, I did just rummage through my drawers for some time now, so, um, yeah. That was all my Harry Potter polishes that I have in my collection, all in these. They will all be linked down below for you, but please, if you know of any more, link them down below so I can go buy them all. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I will be, as I'm rearranging my collection that I'm in the process of doing now, I'll hopefully grab some more and we can do another, at least one or two of videos like this. So give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.